let's go ahead and introduce Spencer. Because I don't have a sound. No, we board. don't. Neil Hamilton, what's up, sir? Good morning. Guys, the intro was so good. Thank you. Uh, oh, Mitch, thank you so much. That air horn. Holy shit. Hey, hey, hey. Just waking up here in Denver, so we'll go back to it and, and, and we'll get into the mountains and, and let you take over. Okay, so so thank you so much. Thank you for the shout out from the mountains. Uh, we're about to have a very Michigan session today. Um, you're about to get some of that that Midwest hospitality, as you all hear so much. Um, and I'll get into uh, why that is in a minute. Um, just to kick off the show, like I always do over the past two episodes, um, this show, I'm not a financial advisor. This is for educational and uh, entertainment purposes only. Uh, I am just like you. I'm probably just like you. There are probably people that are watching this that are way better at trading technically uh, than I am. Everything that I know, I've learned over the past four years or so working at Benzinga. When I first started working at Benzinga, I was just sweeping floors and scheduling Jason Rasnick's hair dye appointments. Uh, and since then, I, through osmosis, have learned a lot of things from people like Dennis Dick, uh, from uh, Joel Elkonen, and a whole slew of other people that we uh, have on our boot camps and we're friends with and blah, 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 all kinds of things like that. Um, and I'm here to share that with you. Let's Let's make it easy. Let's look at technical patterns. Let's look at charts and let's find trading opportunities together. Um, so during the show, I will have a trade idea for you, at least one every day. Um, but uh, I want to get some tickers from you guys. I want to get some ideas from you. I want to crowdsource this and we'll go through them together and have a lot of fun in the process, uh, hopefully. Um, so I do want to announce our guest, very Michigan show for you guys today. Let me tell you something. I don't know if we got any New Yorkers here, any 212 people, all right? Here at Benzinga, we represent the 313, all right? If you've seen 8 Mile, you're familiar with that area code. That's Detroit. We've got a fellow 313 guy. I actually have to check his cell phone number. I don't know if he has that actual area code, but he is from Michigan. He's a Midwest trader. His name is Andy Cole of Mighty Soldiers Trades. He's absolutely fantastic. You won't find a more humble but hunter like he's a huntsman all right he zeroes in on opportunities to make awesome trades in a really short period of time like 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 no other an extremely professional deadly day trader andy cole from mighty soldiers trades will be with us today um and he wouldn't describe himself to you like that because he's very humble and uh very michigan um, but he's a good friend and, and I think we're all going to uh, learn something from him, from him and have a great time. Um, so without further ado, um, I do want to, New York here. <laughs> so, so yeah, thanks guys. Uh, uh, thanks for the representation from 212. Um, hope no offense was taken. Um, but Michigan people are better. Uh, so, so, so let's go ahead and hop into my pick of the day. If you guys watched yesterday. Day, two days ago, actually, uh, we had JC Peretz on. JC Peretz, of course, of All Star Charts, is a technical analyst evangelist. Uh, I know that's a mouthful, but the guy really, really uh, knows what he's talking about. A lot of what I know, I actually learned by taking his his course. So check out All Star Charts. Check out JC Peretz, his work. Um, there's a lot to learn there. Um, but he mentioned that based on the way that commodities ETFs are looking, the way that their relative strength compared to the rest of the market is starting to diverge. And if that doesn't make sense to you, really what that means is he's looking at a single ETF and then he's looking at the broader market, a collective ETF, and seeing that one of those lines is starting to go in another direction. He's seeing some bullish patterns with commodities. So he believes we're entering a commodities super cycle. And commodities, as you guys know, are things like... Uh, energy you're talking about oil and, and energy you're talking about solar now um you're talking about precious metals things like that um are starting to look pretty tasty starting to look like some some snacks for us all to get into um so today i figured i would uh follow the theme and pick out an oil stock uh that is has been absolutely get, been getting beaten up beaten to death straight calls or with options and shorts yeah that's it i don't know what you guys are talking about right now but i will talk about buying options on the trade that i'm about to uh talk about um so without further ado i'm gonna go ahead and bring up that chart 
Let's take a look. Yeah, best way. Okay, thanks, Spencer. Um, all right, so the chart that you're looking at right now, let's go ahead and get that baby full screen. Let's get my face out of here. Um, how does that look for everyone? I'm trying to make it as readable as possible. You should see ticker OXY Occidental, Occidental Petroleum Corp. All right, I'm going to bring this baby full screen. Look at this stock. Look at the, the recent volume we've gotten, all right? This 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 kind of coincides with what we're talking about. Something is happening with this commodity. Something is happening with this company. Something is happening with oil. You're going to see this with other oil stocks. Go ahead and check me on that. Um, but this one's particularly interesting because I believe we have a trading opportunity. This We're looking at monthly incre increments here, guys. So we're going all the way back to, let's say, right about here. This is 2018, May and April of 2018. We started a downward trend, all right? Oil was taken a dump, all right? Ugly, 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 ugly. But now it's time to pick up the scraps. Now it's time to come in like a little, like little rats <laughs> and nibble up the scraps um, uh, with a reversal pattern. Um, so what we're seeing here is some, some volume. Some bulls are coming in and saying, we like this stock. We want to get in here. We want to own some of this. So if you guys have, were on the show um yesterday you might have caught my mention about how bitcoin had a big double bottom um that's kind of what's happening here let's zoom in and take a look so and again guys um just for uh the the pedagogical reasons or the educational reasons um i like to start on that monthly long-term chart so i can get the full perspective so i can see the trends all right. When we're, when we're planning entries from a technical perspective, trends are your starting point. Figure out what the heck has been going on. So over a long period of time, this thing has been getting sold off. The bear's been fighting it all the way down. And yes, there are a bunch of trading opportunities on that that downswing. You could have been bullish when it hit certain levels if we were using a Fibonacci retracement um, and, and made some profit. You could have even bought calls if you wanted to be a little more aggressive with it. Um, but right now we're looking at big swings, big swings. Um, I do not call them this. I never, uh, this is not the way that I, I, I talk about things. Um, I got this from a friend of mine, um, but I never say this. I never say it but this is a big old Kardashian bottom here on this stock. So look, double bottom. What is a double bottom, guys? Well, in short, it's a pattern that follows a downtrend and then reverses it. And we call it a double bottom because it looks like that, double bottom. Kind of like a W. I mean, it, you can call it a W. You can call it whatever the hell you want, but it looks this way. And when you see it, you know, a reversal is possible. Something else that's interesting about the stock that I wanted to point out to you guys is that we had a gap. Look at this gap down, guys. Let's uh, let's uh, let's uh, zoom in. Let's get in here. Let's get uh, let's roll up our sleeves and take a look at this. Um, we had a gap down, and in this bullish market, in this presumably about to be super cycle for commodities in this sector, gaps are gonna get filled. We, you can see that we've started that, it's like halfway filled. Over time, I fully would expect this gap to get filled just based on this momentum alone. But icing on the cake is that we have a double bottom pattern here. So let's talk about that double bottom pattern. I've given you the basic idea of how it works here. You have a downtrend, you have foop, foop, you got a W. And then the next thing that you get from that is a trend upward that is just about as tall as the distance from this resistance line, which is basically uh, the middle of the W here down to the base or the support line of your double bottom. All right, so we're really just measuring, I, yeah, my tool's gonna stay that way. We're measuring this, and then to set our price target, we're adding that to this support line. All right, so I, I don't know, it's not the exact length, but you get the idea. Um, so that's why we love these, is because they're powerful turnarounds, and then this could be something that you stay in, and keep a trailing stop loss on and ride for a while. Um, so let's go ahead and get into the pattern a bit more. 
So what we have here is support. The, the stock was trending down, 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 down. And then one day, a bunch of bears said, dump it, sell it. We're out of this thing. Let's get our money and run. And then the bulls came in and said, this sounds like a bargain I'm buying right now. Oxy, OXY, Occidental Petroleum Core is holding a fire sale. Let's buy, buy, buy. And yes, guys, some of you guys in chat might be mentioning this, but earnings are coming up for this stock. I don't care. I do not care. All of this stuff is baked into the price action. Remember that. There are all of these catalysts. There are all of these external factors, uh, fundamentals for the company, fun, uh, uh, things that are going on in the sector that the company exists in. Yes, they all contribute to what we see on the chart. That's what is baked into this chart. And that's why we're able to draw patterns and have a decent idea of what might happen next when we look at what has already happened. Um, so, so we've got this support line. This is at about, about nine bucks, 930. Um, all right, so we've got the support line. Usually I like to make that uh, uh, green because that's our friend, right? Support's our friend. That's where the bulls are coming in and saying no more. Um, now, what we want to see is a resolution or a breakout, all right? So we've seen, what's the deal with FSR? David, don't let me forget that. Uh, Spencer, don't let me forget that David donated $5. Thank you, David, very much for that. Um, we'll take a look at FSR momentarily. Don't let me forget that. Um, all right, and then we've got this resistance. Now, when you're talking about double bottoms, you really wanna look at where the meat of the action is taking place. A lot of times at the peak of the W, that's not where you want to draw your resistance line. Sometimes that's just some some uh, a spike of activity that really doesn't make up the meat of the battle between the bulls and the bears here. Um, so what we're going to do is delete that line. I'm going to get a little more detail with a day chart here, guys. I'm going to extend my increments here for the price so that we can see more of the dynamism of the price changes happening here. And I'm going to use a rectangle. So I believe that's here. Yes, we're gonna draw a nice rectangle. Let's go ahead and start right about where the meat is. This is where the meat, look at this this action, this buying and selling, all right? Yes, we had some craziness here. We had some fervor, we had a big spike. Look at that, that bar, big spike in buy volume, but we wanna draw it where the meat is, all right? And then you can see that when we're looking at the meat where this battle takes place, that's actually more in line where this resistance level was, where we got kicked back, where the bulls got kicked back. So let's go ahead and draw the rectangle like this, and then I'll give it a transparent background so you guys can see. Okay, so you guys should see a nice rectangle around our double bottom. This is where the whole pattern is taking place. Now, the key here is when you get a double bottom, you can be pretty confident and aggressive traders know this because reversal patterns are so powerful. Never doubt a reversal pattern. We want to find stocks when, when you were really getting into this, you want to find stocks that are sick and dying. Never ever underestimate the veracity of a wounded animal that's backed into a corner. It will come back to you fighting. And that's what we have with OXY right here. We've got a wounded animal. It's been getting hit over and over and over and over. And it's about ready to come back. So we've got this rectangle that actually makes a pretty nice resistance line that we want to break through. But if you're aggressive and you, and you adhere to this wounded an animal analogy, you can get in at the bottom. If you see what you believe is a double bottom forming and you confirm a bounce off of that support line, you can definitely get in early on this. So this is something, if I would have noticed it earlier, I would have eased into it. I would have averaged into this, hoping with a, with a stop loss, with a, a trailing like one to 5% stop loss, I would have ridden this thing up, probably gotten stopped out right about, about here, but still paid attention to it because it's still resolving. All right, charts are messy. They don't make a perfect W like you can type on your computer. Um, and how am I doing on time? Doing all right on time. Um, so I, I, you could have written this up, but if you're more conservative, like most of the folks really should be when you're just getting into technical analysis um, and using that to base, you know, good good amounts of your portfolio. I mean, 
you know, I would say I would put like 1% on something like this for a short term trade. Um, uh, you know, you want to be a little bit more conservative. Uh, so what conservative looks like on this is a close above the top of this rectangle, which we actually have, guys. We have this. Um, so what we're looking for right now is for some volume to come in. We're watching these bars. Right now, volume trending down. But remember, all of the, the, the events that are going on, all of the corporate events, all of the, the uh, uh, fundamentals are baked into what you see on the charts. Earnings are coming up. I, if I'm not mistaken, they're, they might be today. Uh, uh, Spencer, either like today or Monday. Um, but at any rate, something is going to close this gap, guys. Uh, so what we want to do here is measure what our profit potential is. So when you're doing that with a double bottom, remember I said measure the support to that resistance, add it to the resistance. That's your price target. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to draw a line from the base here up to the meat of the action. So that's the top of my rectangle. And I'm going to go ahead and just grab that and bring it up on top of my rectangle. And that's going to give me a price target of right about here, $34 and some change coming up from, you know, kind of where we're trading around right now, like 21. Um, so let's get our ruler tool and calculate what kind of percentage return that is. So if we're getting in now, we're above that rectangle. Um, so let's just say right about here. 55.67% returns on a reversal. Watch this stock, ladies and gentlemen. Watch this stock. Um, earnings. I mean, yes, breakout reversals happen. This this can happen. Let me get my, my paintbrush. That can happen, yes. But we're looking for confirmation and we're keeping a tight stop loss. So what I would say is keep a stop loss of just below this rectangle. This is what I will do. I will I will actually not a trailing stop loss in this case. I will set a firm line in the sand at 20 bucks. All right. If you're going to do me like that, if you're going to break back down to 20 bucks, maybe a little, little lower, like 19 bucks. If you're going to do me like that, I'm out. But I'll still come back. I'll come back. I'll revisit this relationship and see if we can work things out. Uh, so. Folks, that's a double bottom O X Y. Any questions about that? Jeff, I love it. Zebra bull. So, so guys, and another thing I wanted to point out is there are a lot of patterns that are exotic. Basically, when you start getting animal names into patterns, and people start talking about bats and uh, uh, crabs and uh, uh, you know muskrats and possums and, and and zebras and so forth um and it starts to sound like a freaking zoo um it's more complex and usually there are more points that you need to draw into a pattern and it's harder to just look at and recognize and, unless you have a lot of experience with these charts so we're not going to focus on those right now we want to focus on the bread the butter the simple stuff we want to eat toast we want bread and butter we want to eat some delicious toast have some coffee keep it simple nice and smooth we're here to chill and make money um, so at any rate, OXY, that's the pick for the day. I know I spent a lot of time on that, but hopefully um, uh, you got enough to digest sort of how this works. And then also, guys, look at some other oil stocks right now. A lot of these patterns look similar. I like this one in particular because it has this gap. And again, in this bull market, don't bet against gaps getting filled, especially if it has to go up to fill that down gap. Um, all right, guys. Um, okay, earning, uh, Oxy Earnings Tuesday afternoon. Um, great stuff. The ticker, ticker again, OXY, OXY should be on the screen. Um, so next on my agenda, I wanna, I wanna, I wanna tell you about, about something, all right? All right, where, where are my notes, Spencer? Where'd I put them? Um, I got two, I have two really cool things for you, actually. So number one, what I want to say is Spencer, get that link up for the Benzinga bootcamp. If you liked this little segment of education, um, if you thought it was easy for you to digest and you thought that it was something that you can take to the markets and, uh, you know, ha have some fun with and, and hope and make some money at the same time. Um, we do this in a longer format at the Benzinga bootcamp. Um, so that is coming up this month in a couple weeks. Make sure you register. It will fill up. Um, it's free to attend, completely free to attend a full day of education on a Saturday. Get your popcorn, put on your pajamas, 
lay in your bed, get your laptop, watch it. All right. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. You're going to learn a lot. You do have the opportunity to buy the full recording of the event. And it's like a, a masterclass. It's like six to eight hours of me, uh, hot stocks, Luke, um, some of the best traders in the business. We've got a killer lineup. Um, uh, people from Chris to Camillo to Gianni to Poche, some of the best folks that are going to teach you about options trading with Nick Shaheen. He's going to be there talking about options. Okay, hopefully hopefully you guys can hear me. My headset died. Um, to teach you about options. And SPACs. This is going to be the first boot camp where we're going to have a large focus on SPACs. So you're going to get Mitch and Chris Kachi there talking about SPACs. Um, a lot of trade ideas, a lot of concrete tactics that you can use and are easy to remember. So definitely, definitely sign up for that. It's free. It's something you're crazy not to do it. So um, let's get that link on the screen if we don't have it. Yeah, it's benzingabootcamp.com. Go ahead and register for that. Um, I do want to look at the stock that I believe it was David um, pitched. But really quick before I do that, guys, I woke up this morning. I had I, I was feeling crazy like different than normal, more crazy than normal. I woke up, I was all, all confused. I didn't know where I was. I thought I, I, I thought I was back in my college dorm room, back in the reckless days, the all or nothing days, the gambling days. And I got an idea, guys. What if we had a wager with chat? What if you guys and I had a little wager? All right. I want to give you guys the opportunity to win up to $10,000 in Benzinga stuff. All right. Yes, I'm talking t-shirts and mugs. Yes, you guys are all get your cute little Benzinga hat. You know, you wear your little little shirt. You get your, you get the the Metallica. Uh, I, actually, don't don't say that copyright. You get the Zing Metallica uh, Benzinga shirt if you want to be cool like your your guy right here. But we're talking about lifetime subscriptions to Benzinga Pro giveaway. Benzinga Pro is the best platform. I'm not saying this because I work at, at Benzinga. It's honestly like when I'm doing my own trading, I, I open it and I use this when I want to know what the hell is going on with a stock. That's bottom line. If you want to know what is going on with a stock, use it. The other side of that is all this, the picks that I have for you uh, on the show. I don't just look at charts first. I discover them using the screener on Benzinga Pro. So it's my discovery tool. It's my what the hell is going on with the stock tool. Benzinga Pro um, giving away two lifetimes as part of this contest. Um, I will give you the details on exactly how the contest works. No, you cannot do anything extra yourself in order to win. It's 100% random that will be doing this, but I want to share with you, Spencer, do you have the link to the, the Google sheet that I shared that you can, you can put on the screen or put in chat? And if not, I'm going to drop it right now. I have it. Sorry. I was talking to myself. I was saying I have it. <laughs> Okay. Okay. <laughs> um, all right. So drop, drop that in to the chat guys. This is a spreadsheet. Put your name, put what you would like to learn from Get Technical. That's what the show is apparently called. Uh, uh, what you would like to learn from Get Technical from me, from the guests that we have on the show. Um, and your email address. And that will enter you into the contest. And we will have a live event on Monday, maybe Tuesday, uh, where we will, in a very Las Vegas fashion, uh, uh, find our winners. There will be first, second, third place prizes. Um, like I said, a lot of fashionable Benzinga swag um, along with that Benzinga Pro giveaway. Um, and then I just really, really quick, and, and you know what? Yeah, I got, I got five minutes before we bring our guest, Andy Cole, on. Um, I want to look at that uh, uh, ticker, F FSR. Um, okay, Fisker. Oh, paintbrush tool. Okay, 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 okay. I see what's happening here, Fisker. Go ahead and break this up to a month. Get it. Okay, what, what, what do you, David? David, what is this company? Um, what is Fisker? It's a EV play. Ooh, okay, EV. Uh, 
<laughs> That's the sound I make when I hear uh, about electric vehicles. All right, oh, so strange it's, sound. Yeah, yeah. Cut that out in post. Um, all right, so we've got Fisker. Here's what I got to say about this. Um, <laughs> a lot of people bought it and a lot of people sold it off. Not sure what the catalyst was there. Um, this was on November 20th. Um, my mind reels as to what may have happened. However, that might have been, if I do this, um, it, that it, might it, have it, been it used to be used to be a SPAC. It was a SPAC and they oh. and the completed. So. Okay, guys, got the, the SPAC. This is why you have me. You have me for the fundies. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Fundy, Fundy Spencer. Um, uh, so what you got here, guys, is a period of consolidation um, that needs to get digested. This thing is trading sideways. FSR is trading sideways. Um, so we're going to get our new favorite uh, shape, which is a rectangle. Um, rectangle, which is also oddly the same shape of the subscribe button which oddly only 50% of you seem to be clicking. So, you know, make make sure if you see that that rectangular subscribe button underneath this video, just click it, just click it. You got nothing to lose, just click it. Helps us out. Um, anyways, we're trading in a range here. Yes, if you're looking at a shorter term, um, if you're an aggressive trader, there are probably a bunch of opportunities in here for you to be making some money. Um, but we've got uh, just a period of consolidation. What I would be looking for is some sign of a trend. Uh, so, you know, my style of trading is I want to see a trend and then I want to see a, a period of consolidation that forms a discernible pattern. And then I want to see volume coming in to indicate that other people have the conviction that I have. And then I want to get in and make money with a bunch of other super intelligent, good looking technical traders. Um, so in this case, FSR, if you like the stock, if you like the fundamentals, I'm not going to tell you not to trade it. What we clearly have is strong support here. The The buyers are saying, nope, that's as low as we're going to let you go. Um, but what I would be looking for is some period of time where it does something like that. We want to get some kind of upward trend. Um, and then hopefully within that upper trend, we get a, a period of consolidation that makes it a discernible pattern, you know, a pennant, a flag, something like that. Um, that would be a continuation pattern. When something's trading sideways in technical analysis, we just call it a hot mess. There's not much you can do with, with it on a swing trading basis. Um, if you're more aggressive, though, you can trade it short term, keep a tight trailing stop loss, or at least just a tight stop loss, um, and do things a lot more advanced than I'm personally interested in doing because I work full time. I'm not watching the charts all day. Um, I don't see myself being a full-time day trader. I am an investor who supplements my investment returns with great trades that I can hang my hat on because they're based on solid technical analysis. Um, so that's FSR for you. Um, although our guest, fellow Michigander, guys, Michigan, the state of... Spider melt. Um, the state of 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 the state of pasties. I bet you I bet you anyone from Michigan doesn't know what a pa uh, if you're not from Michigan, you don't know what a pasty is. If, if if you know what a pasty is, if you know what one is, put it in chat and let me know. Um, I would love to see that. Um, a pasty. It's a special special thing. I'm not even gonna give you a, a category of what it is that can only be found uh in the upper peninsula of michigan if you know what that is um you're an official uh, uh michigander we'll we'll put you in i'll speak to the board um the president of which is uh andy cole and we'll see if we can get you inducted into the, the official michigander uh board um so without further ado my favorite michigan trader um excellent technical analyst excellent short-term trader um, who knows a lot more about how you might be able to do some things here with FSR, um, Andy Cole of Mighty Soldiers Trades. Can we get uh, Andy on? Hey, what's going on, Neil? Hey, Andy, how are you doing? Pretty good. I love that uh, Michigan traders are better. So representing 313, that's pretty awesome. Welcome to the 313, anybody who, you know, out there that doesn't know how amazing it really is here. That's right. And you and you really know how to find the 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 great aspects of Michigan because you're quite an outdoorsman. I mean, the thing is, is Michigan's perfect for that. We don't have like, you know, animals that are going to eat you, boars that are going to like run you down mostly. I, I have encountered bears though, but you know, and I guess uh, the wolves can be a problem up north on the UP. Yep. 
Speaking of uh, and what is that like the burger a burger thing like that? That's a like burger wrap that the pasty thing you're talking about, right? Like, like I've that. never I've never heard it described that way, but yes, that's basically what it is. Have you been to the Upper Peninsula? And, oh, and, yeah, really and yes, we're gonna talk it. Carson trading in a second, guys. But just hold on. With the two Michigan bros, we're gonna we need a minute. In Michigan, we like to say hi before we get into charts. Well, really quick, I mean, we could just say that what do we have? Like some some little failed kind of head and shoulders deal uh, that we're just sitting flat, right? I mean, oh, you're not gonna bro out with me on pasties anymore. That's fine. That's fine. Oh no, All no, right. we, we just gotta give them what they want really quick and go right back to it. And you know, more uh, more to the to the point of not giving these people what they're really here for. Uh, let, let Bert know that I definitely have a Roman coin with his name on it. So, uh, I, you know, I don't really know what that means, but I'm, I am happy to deliver that message for you. I'm sure he's, he, he knows now. He knows. Okay. Yeah, I'm not going to forget about him. All right. All right. Um, so, uh, would you mind talking about FSR? Do you have any uh, perspective on this? I'm going to stop sharing my screen. If well, I... To be honest with you, Neil, um, FSR, uh, you know, I really have nothing much to say other than like what I, what I said. If you if you want to pull it up, you can pull it up. If you want me to pull it up, I can pull it up. You know, but how I do what I do, I'm looking for how stocks die 101. I'm uh, you know, I'm I'm, and this one here, this is just like some chop. Like we don't have the the real drop off that we really want. I guess we did a little bit, yeah. But you know, we don't really have what we want to the downside. We don't really have what we want to the upside. And I just play what the market's given me in the moment you know so mm. i'm looking for higher highs lower lows you know these upper shadows like fsr you know see way up at the high there we have that big huge upper shadow so that's price couldn't hold up there you know so i'm trading intraday and looking for stuff like that like just that price couldn't hold these upper shadows and then you know when it pulls down and it attempts to go green a little bit and then i see that it can't hold that and it continues south like that's a whole other play i don't anticipate that it's going to pop back up to the moon anytime soon any longer from that you know, and just basically how stocks die 101. And then for me, and this is something that you can't pull up there, but on the 15 second chart, I'm looking at the rejection on the 65. Once we get a rejection on the 65 and we start holding it as resistance, we'll hold the 65 as resistance the whole way down intraday. So these stocks that are, I'm up, they see me, I'm down, you know, they let you know exactly how they're dying. And so JG is an example. This morning, JG, um, it, we had this, uh, this ascending... Here. Here, Andy, why don't, you, why don't you click the share screen thing, and I'll get, okay, I'll get yeah. it out there. Let's see what screen I want to share. <laughs> okay, for some reason, it's not giving me the option to share the screen that I need to be sharing, Neil. It's oh, only... okay. Can, can you go to share screen, and there's, there's some tabs in the little tool bar that or a tool tip that opens up, and then there should be tabs at the top, and then you can select the application or the tab in Chrome. If so it's I a can't web really give you guys exactly what I wanted to give you here. Actually, maybe I can. I'm gonna I'm gonna show you guys how I'm a bag holder right now. If you guys can see this. <laughs> so uh, add to stream. There we go. So can you see how I'm a bag holder in SNDL just yet, Neil? Where way too many charts here. What are we looking at? Okay, so basically we have the five minutes. This is my main chart. Got the 15 second over to the left and got my daily up here top left. And then the oh, we got the wrong one, guys. We got the wrong one. Okay, we gotta stop this. This is this is uh yeah, I got you guys on the mess. So how do I stop share share? Sorry about that. No, that's okay. I, I like to see a little bit behind the scenes. This is this is what oh, someone who trades every single day for a living. That's looks the at. one that I tr actually trade. That's my mess. That's what I really trade with. You guys just saw the mess that I actually do trade with. You know. So now, can you guys see my screen? Uh, yeah. So we've got oh, like four little, charts. A little more clean here. Okay. So what do we have? Uh, Anyways, my SNDL bag that I'm holding, losing $32 in it. This is the 10K account that I started with you guys at the boot camp. And I had it up to uh, over 11,000 yesterday, right before I took a loss and knocked it back down to like, I don't even know. Let me let me tell you guys if you'd like to know. Uh, 10,922 is where we sit right now. And that's like 11, 11 trading days. Um, but anyways, uh, looking at the five minute here. We had this ascending price channel on the five minute for uh, JG. 
So, you know, we popped up, we pretty much doubled that and then we doubled that. So tripling the whole deal, looking beautiful. And what I had said around market open, as soon as we dropped and we went below the 65 and we retested it as resistance right here, that we're probably going to go run some stops and uh, break through the support on this ascending price channel, the previous resistance here. And that's exactly what we did. But the problem here is if we busted right through the 65 and the five minute, we attempted to go green. And like I said, once we attempt to go green and go south again, like all bets are off, we're going to have to change. But if you look over the 15 second, we've been holding this 65 as resistance. You know, sometimes we have this polar push sort of thing to where it's not exact. Sorry, my 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 screen's over to the left. So the camera and all this, I'm really sorry about that. All good, um, baby. Looking way over here today. But man, I mean, if you look at a stock that pops up and you see that, you you know, you got this bull flag whatever it is. And then all of a sudden you're remaining bullish and you pop up ascending price channel. And you know, you got the same exact little stair stepping action. You go up for three beautiful runs. You, you don't really think this thing's going back home, but that's exactly what I tell people. First row in penny stocks, I'm up, they see me, I'm down. So we're expecting this thing to, at the minimum, come back and run some stops at this previous consolidation right here and go for a, you know, a lower low. Uh, but in this one, this one's just totally dying at the moment. So I feel bad for anybody who was really putting their hopes in JG this morning. I took some profit in it personally. Um, we pulled $73 on that 10K account this morning on JG and I don't know, several, several others. I remember CLOB, you guys were talking about it yesterday. We'd taken some profit on that huge drop yesterday. But, you know, as far as uh, price patterns and stuff, I think in ascending price channel, but a descending price channel is probably more valuable because that's where you can see where they're catching the averagers. You can see that as we're stair stepping down, these are where people are adding into their position. And how you how do you know that? You add in your position, and you'll see. <laughs> you know, like you want to add into a loser, you'll find yourself getting getting caught and getting kicked in the face. Like you're, they're not going to put you in a profit. They don't let you breathe fresh air. You're you're dunked and you're staying dunked. And if you want to add again, it's going to happen again and again. I mean, these penny stocks are preloaded loaded with downside, but they're also great at crushing us and that's what they're doing here. But this is just more like uh, this is honestly, yeah, this isn't even a, a descending price channel pretty much. This is just straight down demon drop. I call this a demon drop. They're just, they're just killing people in this one. But, so, so, so Andy, a couple questions. Um, number one, what tool are you using? Oh, this right here. This yep. is my trade station 10 platform. Um, on, on, the, on this platform right here, I got my five minute. This is where I look for my main setup, my main charts. Uh, over here, I got my 15 second, and uh, that's where I'm looking for the nails in the road. I'm trying to see, you know, like I said, I'm trying to see, have we flipped? Because the thing is, is, when we're looking at the five minute, we pull back a little bit on the five minute, and that looks like the most beautiful pullback ever. That's where everybody gets really excited and wants to add for that next super big run, right? You look over at the 15 second, you realize that you just dropped below the, the 65 EMA, this light gray line, and then you come back and retest it, and you see that it's holding as resistance. That tells you right there, this is not what you think. This is not that pullback you've been dreaming of. This is this is how stocks die 101. And that's really all I care about. I just care how stocks die because I've been hurt by it so, much, so many times. I don't want to be hurt by it anymore. I don't care what's going to the moon. I don't think about what's going up or you know how much money I can make. I only care how do stocks die and how do I avoid that death myself. And you know, as you see, we did. We came and we touched this 200, bounced right back up. And I took profit here. I think I took this bounce. But anyways... We, we, uh, we bounced the 200, we bounced right back, held the 65's rejection, and then came back. We rejected on the 200, same thing, curled back up at this little drop-off. We held this one and got rejected yet again. Boom, same exact behavior. Now we popped a lower shadow, held that 365, and then after that, it's it's all bets are off. I mean, just just total destruction the whole way down. And then, you know, we got that polar push holding the 65 as resistance the whole way as well. But this is the kind of stuff that I look for day in and day out, those descending price channels and those rejections off the 65, and just to know that, hey, this stock is not that beautiful opportunity that it looks like on these higher time frames. So, okay. So that is a very good cautionary tool, uh, uh, lesson rather. I don't know why I said tool. Uh, I, I'm, now I'm interested in looking at some potential oppor opportunities on the bright side here. 
Um, and I'm wondering, Andy, if you wouldn't mind if we just pulled in some ideas from chat, if we pulled in some tickers um, that are coming up, and if you just just kind of look at them and 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 give give us your perspective as a technical trader. You know, why are you using the five minute? Why are you using um, uh, the, those what look like moving averages that you're using, or MACD or VWAP? I'm not sure. Um, what are those? Why are you using them? So forth. Um, I did have a Canadian. Um, acting up in chat, which is very, I think, very out of sorts uh, for a Canadian. Um, <laughs> but he was upset that we weren't weren't getting his tickers. Um, so if you're Canadian and and you recently had a small temper tantrum, I'd love it if you can just give me those ticker, tickers again, um, so that we can uh, go over them. Um, uh, so Canadian, little bit a uh, little bit slow to the draw here. So let's take a look at KMPH. Andy, if you don't mind, if you don't mind really thought. quick, Neil, before we move on, just if we can get this ascending price channel in our heads, though, you know, you can see we popped, we had the stair step on LAIX, it's the same exact thing. And I want to just make sure we got this. And then, you know, we're obviously looking for rounding out, and that rounding out is beautiful. You can buy that resistance break. I don't buy resistance breaks. I try to grab it before it gets a resistance break. So I'm already preloaded with profit. So if it does reject, I'm good. I'm still golden moving on to the next day. But and and like I said, we 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 pulled down, we ran those stops. So you said, what are we K? What? <sighs> Shit, I oh. forgot it now, Andy. No, it's fine. No, K M P H. K M P H. Kappa Michigan Papa Hammer. And I don't know what's going on, but yeah. So I mean, basically the same exact sort of thing. You know, some sort of choppy, very light on volume. Only six hundred ninety-two thousand traded. Uh, we rounded out, we went right back up to the previous highs and got rejected. And what are we going to do? We're probably going to run some stops, but at the bare minimum, we pulled down to the 65. But what are we looking for? I mean, we're looking for U's, we're looking for J's and breakouts, you know, we're looking for uh, bull flags, bull pennants. So picture when you're at the, the off-road park and you got your little flag with the triangular, you know, little flag there. Like that's what, that's some bread and butter right there. That's some, mm. some stock magic. Mm. Yeah, that's not what we're seeing right here but um you know i really don't if somebody asked me about this one i would just say that i would expect this rejection here everybody i i hear all the time they're like check out kmph it's popping back towards the highs and i'm like yeah no it's not it's it's going to grab some suckers you know trade the worm you're bound to be the catch of the day sort of thing and that's exactly what's what's happening but you have any more tickers you want me to put in? Yeah, I do. I just want to thank you for for calling uh, uh, the bull flags and the bull pennants bread and butter. Mm -mm -mm. I agree. Delicious. Goes Absolutely. with spaghetti. Goes with anything. Um, uh, and it's affordable. Um, all right. So the, so okay. So I found our disgruntled Canadian Kyle in chat. Thank you so much for quoting him. Um, hopefully him or her. Uh, uh, hopefully uh, uh, they didn't rage quit. Um, uh, and and you know keep keep us locked out. Um, of entering their, their beautiful country. So uh, uh, we're looking at PYR, PYR. Before we go to PYR, if I could just tell you guys, look at AAME, this thing is beautiful. It is beasting out. We got 12 million traded up 305%. I mean, come on, every day in Pennyland, we got 100% ripper, 300% ripper. I mean, what we had 4,300% in SPI or was it 4,600? I don't can't remember anymore. And I just forgot your ticker again, Neil. I'm sorry. Uh, it's it's okay. Now I'm looking up AAME on my brokerage. Um, so so PYR Papa Yard Sale Robinhood. Papa Yard Sale Robinhood. All right, and I don't I can't tell you. I don't know what's going on with me there. <laughs> we might be good at trading in Michigan, but we're not good at typing in tickers in our charts. Because we think faster than we type. It's it's because our brains are so fast. Oh, this is due to list in two weeks apparently. You know. So oh, okay. So what the heck? What? <laughs> but I mean, speaking of like, you know, ascending price channel, potential bull flags, uh, you know, if we if we go over here and probably switch this five minute to a one minute, I'm assuming that we're going to see yeah, an ugly, <laughs> ugly sort of bull flag-ish consolidation. But the cool thing is we came and bounced that 20. And on the 20, the 20 is one of the most amazing places to add into any trade on the five minute. The 65 is the most amazing place to add on the six, 15 second. Uh, one minute. Yeah, one minute. Sorry. Um, also the five minute though. So 20 is beautiful. Just, just the 20 is beautiful, guys. I use the 9, the 20, the 65, the 200 EMA. Um, and AAME is an total monster 358 percent we might even end up having a halt while we're doing this right now so just that i don't know so uh, want to bring me back neil 
Yeah. So, 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 so Andy, I got, I got, we got time for one more ticker from chat. Um, and then I have uh, uh, some questions I want to ask you specifically. Um, so guys, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to find some continuity here in terms of, uh, have you guys mentioned the same stock more than once? Um, we got it. You know, we got to look at sundial. We just have to. All right. We got to look at my bag. You got to rub it in. Okay. Wait, was that, that's not the first one you showed. Is this another bag? Oh, no, this is the only bag. The only bag I have right now, and I don't know if this is the stream yard is like a powerhouse. By, by, by the way, uh, Mighty Soldiers Trades has an awesome shirt uh, that, that I actually have that's uh, like a stick figure guy with a paper bag on his head that says bag holder. Um, I didn't know until this moment that it was that Andy drew himself, uh, presumably with a crayon to get this, yes, this shirt produced. Exactly it's a, it's a fucking know. hilarious shirt. Um, I recommend you guys guys try to get it for Mighty Soldier Trades. Um, okay, so Sunday is this the first one that you showed that that you were saying was was the bag? No, no, this this I'm not. I didn't show that because honestly, I'm embarrassed. I'm embarrassed that I'm in this barcode type action. That's what I just call this. This is this ticky barcode type garbage that you don't want to be playing in. You want momentum. You want to know the volumes behind you. You want that like that boulder rolling down the hill. There's no way you could stop it if you if you tried the freight yeah. train. You know, pressing the brakes and it's not stopping. This yes. is not that. This is this when you see this ticky type garbage, you know, it could do that. But if it does that, there's only somebody with a plan doing that, not you, you know, or maybe you're all pouring in there at once and it's happening because a news catalyst just came through or something. So it could happen. But, you know, just that in particular is not what I'm looking for. This is just choppy barcode run my stops, get me out of my bag uh, type action. So, so there you go. That's Sundial for you folks. That There you go. Uh, uh, looks like Hot Stocks Luke Jacoby is in chat, um, uh, which is weird because he has a full-time job. I don't know what what, what he should be doing right now. Um, uh, what percent of assets should you put in Doge? Um, any trade everything. like that, that's risky. What, everything. Andy? Everything. everything. Absolutely well, so, everything. The house, sorry. the mortgage. So, you know. so again, this is not financial advice, and this this isn't for chat. This is specifically for House Stocks, Luke Jacoby. But yes, everything you got. It's not for Actually, me though. That's what Elon. Elon says everything. You know. Okay, Elon says everything. In fact, I want you to take all of Benzinga, uh, our cash reserves that we haven't spent already, put it in the Doge. Give it right. to the dog. Yep. All right. Good. Memes are they're gonna they're they're our, our path to prosperity and financial freedom, guys. Obviously. Um, all right. So Andy is a real one. Um, uh, Andy, uh, I want to I want to close up the charts now, and just you know, I just want to get, get you and me in the corner here. All right. This is, you know, this is where I'm, this is Oprah. You know, just me and you. Um, Andy, uh, if you could describe yourself um, uh, as a trader, and I know a lot of times people have a hard time with this, but like if you could just sort of in in one sentence say what type of trader you are, how would you describe it? Uh, well, I mean, if, if I'm going to be serious about it, I'm, I'm scalping these things. I'm like taking little, like, like a piranha, you know, I'm taking my bite, I'm moving over, I'm chewing it up really quick and I'm coming back in for another one and another one over and over again, you know? So I'm just tearing these things up all day long. I'm looking for bullish action and I'm letting it come to me. You know, I'm, I'm not just grabbing the resistance breaks. I'm not reaching for the highs, you know, I'm not hitting the ask. I mean, I, I am hitting, I am taking liquidity, uh, instead of offering it, but I'm, uh, I'm not just uh, grabbing a stock that's pushing the ass like AAME. I believe we are halted now. And, uh, you know, it's just pushing the ass the whole way up from this pullback on the five minute. If I can, you know, maybe I should. Oh, you can't see it anyway. So hey, no, go ahead. Go ahead. You want to do it? Go ahead. Uh, yeah, yeah. If you stopped your share, I got to bring it back up. Yeah, I stopped my share. All right, we can come back to it next time. Yeah, it's we'll, okay. We'll it back anyways, I mean, like, you know. I want to grab that pullback. I want to grab that nice red candle. I'm hunting reds in bullish behavior. I, I do not. I do not buy the 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 rip. You know, I'm buying the dip. But the dip just might be some temporary area where I can find temporary support. I get in and I take advantage of that price. I see buyers stepping in. I'm looking at price action. I'm looking at where these buyers are stepping in, and I have these predictable areas on the chart, like a 65 EMA on the 15 second or whatever else I've mentioned to you guys. You know. Uh, uh, lower end support on a bull flag, bull pennant, something like that. Like these are these are gorgeous areas to to consider looking for where price is stepping in. And as soon as you find, as far as making money goes, just just look for those areas where you can predict that hey, buyers are are possibly going to step in here. Not that they are, and that's another thing about technical analysis: looking for U's, triangles, wedges, whatever else. You know, some books tell you this is supposed to go up from here. This is supposed to go down from here. I don't care what it's supposed to do. It's just a catalyst, like the news. It brings my eyes there. 
And what it does is what I'm going to trade. And sometimes I'm just as happy if it drops and I'm still buying it long and I'm still taking profit all day long on a drop. Like CLOV, everybody else is getting crushed in CLOV. I'm hopping in there and hopping out because I can see buyers stepping in for that little moment, get my piece of the action and move on, you know? And I'm not so, hanging out to be crushed and waiting and hoping and crossing my fingers, smoke signals, prayers, whatever. If you're doing that, you probably should be out of the trade. Yeah. Okay. So, so scalping, uh, piranha is your spirit animal. You have a piranha like mentality. Um, uh, not one sentence, but a, the, the very descriptive and, and that it gives us a very good idea of, of what you, what you're doing here every single day. Absolutely. Now, now Andy, um, if, if, if that sounds good to folks, if, if folks want to get in on that piranha energy action where you're scalping trades, you're finding opportunities that are in between what I'm here to talk about. I'm more swing longer term looking for opportunities and then hopping in and striking and then getting the hell out. Uh, uh, if people are liking that piranha energy, where can they get more of that from you, Andy? Well, I got a couple things for you guys. Uh, right now we're streaming live at bullishbears.com in the small cap room. They were gracious enough to invite us over there and we've been streaming there. It's the most amazing family, the kindest people ever. And we're going to be adding some more to our own website as well. And I've been having so many requests for mentoring and I've been dragging my feet, not wanting to do it. And I think I'm finally just going to have to bite the bullet and do it. So some one-on-one -on -one, like zoom meetings will be coming up in the future, but don't expect me to tell you where to buy, where to sell. And you know, yeah, you, like you gotta, you gotta do your own thing, man. You gotta yep. fill your own plate and eat your own food. Like I can't do it for you. This is education. This is education. Uh, all right. So, guys, if you want that piranha energy, if you want that Michigan maple syrup goodness, get on over to Mighty Soldier Trades. Check them out. Andy Cole, great group of people making that company work. Andy, thank you so much for being with us today. Thanks, Neil. Really appreciate it, man. All right, guys. Next up, we've got about, I'm terrible at math, but we got about uh, eight minutes. We got eight minutes left. I want to take some tickers from chat. I go ahead and give me all your YOLO trades and all your garbage that you found in the, the deep, dark 4chans of the internet. Um, and we'll pull them up, take a look at them, uh, and see if there's anything there or see if you're just a psycho. Um, if you're psycho, that's fine. That's fine. I'm not saying that in a bad way. Just, just don't hurt people, okay? Love your neighbor. Um, so bring them in. Bring in. Okay, we, we, want, we got David with GM, all right? So I'm going to share the thing. Oh, and also, I just want to take this opportunity. Guys, It's it, it continues to boggle my mind how weird this is. Did you guys know that only half of you watching this are subscribed to the channel? And so what, why don't you guys make an order on that subscribe button and go ahead and execute it? The dad joke. But hit the subscribe button, guys. Come on. Come on. What are you doing? Let's get those subscribe subscribes up so that uh, Jason lets me keep doing this show. I love doing it. I love it so much. I don't want it to go. Hit subscribe. Give us a like. Um, all right. First is GM. All right. So I'm, now I'm looking for my chart. I know it's on screen, but I don't have it on my computer. Looks like we just lost Neil. <laughs> all right. Neil, do we have you? I'm, I'm here. I got so excited, I, I exited the stream, guys. I got so excited about GM, I exited the stream. Dear Lordy. All right, Neil, come back to us. Bring your charts back. Let's go. Okay, it's coming up. Coming up, coming up, coming up. Coming up. You just Going love fast. Shut, I, shut I, I, I thought you had a power outage. I didn't know what happened. All right. I'm getting out of here. I don't know where I'd be without you, Spencer. Um, all right, guys, so we, we should have this chart. Let's go ahead and get that thing full screen. Um, all right, we're looking at GM. Boom. I like GM right now, guys. I just want to say, I know that this is against the doctrine of being a technical trader, but I like GM because they seem to finally be, uh, I mean, a year later, finally be getting into the electric vehicle thing. Um, they even changed their logo to like look more like a plug, I guess. Um, all right, so looking at GM, I mean, this looks like every stock in the market right now. Seriously, this looks like every stock in the market. I showed you guys this little thing with my, my fancy paintbrush the other day. Everything looks like that. Boop. Looks like a lacrosse stick. All right. Lacrosse stick. Um, GM, GM, GM. Um, what we see here, what I can say is that when you're looking at uh, your RSI, which is relative strength, is it index? I don't care. I think the, the name for, for 
RSI is weird. It's confusing because relative strength is something else when you're talking about uh, comparing markets. Um, but at any rate, this indicator is called RSI. Uh, it is an indicator of momentum. Um, so, you know, it goes between zero and 100 that makes it an oscillator anything that goes back and forth between zero and 100 is an oscillator anything on this oscillator that's above 70 means that it's over bought that means there's a good chance that all the bulls are exhausted and they're ready to take profits anything below 30 on this thing means that it's oversold which means that uh, all the the sellers are exhausted and they're pretty much gotten rid of all the shares and that the bulls have an opportunity to come in and buy everything on a discount so we like to see stocks that are on an upward trend. Yes, an upward trend often indicates that there is going to be a, a continuous trend with the underlying asset. Um, so when we're looking at uh, GM, let's go ahead and get this baby on the day chart. Um, looking pretty choppy. Looks like just about everything else right now. All I can say is that we're looking for ATH or all-time highs. Let me zoom out. Actually, if this is all-time highs, I'm being kind of surprised. What? What? Okay, guys. That goes back to 2000. All right. Um, all I have to say about GM is barring any external catalyst that would drive out the price of the stock based on enthusiasm from investors or perceived value of the company having increased. Um, we just want to see it cross all time highs. Um, don't bet against the stock that crosses all time highs. If I were trading this stock, I would look for a candle that has actually closed a full body of a candle that is closed above this all-time high level at $56. Um, and if I believe in what GM is doing, I would look for a continuation of this trend and just keep a trailing stop loss. That's what it is, guys. You're going to hear a lot of repetition on this show. That's what it's about. K-I-S-S. Keep it simple, stupid. Um, uh, yeah, okay. So we got laser. I like that one. Um, really quick, what do they do? Are they lidar? Spencer is laser lidar. Um. Uh, yeah. Okay. Cool. Oops, sorry, um, I was talking to Jason, but uh, yeah. Let's do so. Get, get him out of here. Ignore Jason. Um. So yeah. so so so, so um, uh, lidar guys. If you don't know what it is, that's the laser technology that allows uh uh, basically computers or machines to know where they are to scan the environment it's what's on your your iphone if you have one that does your that scans your facial structure um to identify you and unlock your phone well it's a crucial technology for autonomous vehicles um so when we get good ev news such as apple partnering with kia um, hyundai to uh, uh produce vehicles the same way that they partnered with foxconn to produce iphones we're going to get a spark in or a spike in stocks that support that type of advancement right or as jason calls it jason rasek benzinga the thing behind the thing so in this case l-a-z-r lidar is the thing behind the thing whoa i just blacked out for a minute i was talking about fundamentals all right, let's talk about the chart. Um, so we're we look like we're we're consolidating here. I don't see like anything too interesting in terms of swings, right? Like we had a big swing high here, big swing low, and then we had some really tight consolidation. Um, normally, after that period of tight consolidation, you want something like this. This is like a little bit cuter. Um, we got this high, we got this high, and then we got a little bit of a bump here. But if I went to a four hour, we get something. A little more structured yeah yeah, yeah 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 so we get one two three bumping along this is a classic case guys of when the pattern goes past like either 50 percent of the way through your wedge or 75 percent of the way through your wedge once it starts to get past that it's less likely that a breakout's going to occur statistically the breakouts happen around 50 or 75 this is the sweet spot you want to see it about two-thirds of the way through your pattern um and this just kept consolidating through it um so yeah i mean i'm sure it might it might have gotten maybe a little bit of a, a bump here on on some apple news um actually no it didn't um nothing interesting there lazr um that's it. I am out of time, guys. It is 1030 in the AM Eastern Time, Detroit time. Remember the 313 were the nicest traders in the plan on the planet. Um, Spencer, thank you for coming back on. It is, 
It is my pleasure to do two things. One, I just want to remind you guys, please hit the subscribe button. Make sure you like this video. Um, and make sure you check out the Benzega Bootcamp coming up, BenzegaBootcamp.com. Facts, options, facts, and options. You're going to learn about how to trade on those. We're going to keep it very, very simple for you. And it's interactive, just like this, but a full Saturday. Um, so definitely attend. It's like an online festival. It's like the Coachella of SPACs and options. How can you say no to that? Um, uh, I, I, I like Coachella and I like SPACs. So I guess that. You are a Coachella guy. No, actually, I'm really, I'm really not. I, I, no, I'm really not. I've never been to a music festival in my life. Just... Are you sure? I thought I saw you at Coachella. You, you didn't. I swear. Okay, must have been someone that looked like you. Um, so next up, it is my pleasure to introduce Spencer. Spencer does not like the Coachella thing. Uh, but it is my 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 my, my pleasure Wait, to Neil, introduce. Neil, 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 I'm being told we need to stall for a quote a minute or two. Is a direct quote from uh, from. So we've got the Benzinger Pro Happy Hour, uh, which is available to Benzinger Pro subscribers. It goes every day from 10 to 11. The first half of that is 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 closed door uh private for them the second half of that we're experimenting with bringing it on to youtube opening up to the masses uh so we're getting that set up right now uh, so that's why you usually come in like mid mid conversation because the happy hour goes from 10 to 11 it's with ryan faluna uh and andrew weiss and our benzinger pro team and all of our subscribers uh and for the for this week we're at least trying opening that door up to uh to everyone and, and just and inviting them all to the happy hour uh let me check with rohan rohan are we good all right rohan says we have video but we're still working on audio neil what are you looking at no, you problem, no, no problem no problem so i got um uh david h david are you the disgruntled canadian and is it okay if i call you that um thanks for coming through with it with the, the fibonacci um so guys <laughs> we haven't talked too much about how fibonacci works um, but this is where, this is where I might lose some people. Um, but I'm telling you this, this thing works. Um, the Fibonacci retracement is based on here. Let me do a, a Fibonacci sequence. Um, it's based on a sequence, um, that, uh, was found in Leon, uh, was it was Leonardo da Vinci's journals? Did he draw this thing a lot? Uh, or someone else with the last name Fibonacci, some Renaissance dude. It, it, all right. it was Fibonacci, man. That's the guy. Okay, whatever. Um, all right, I want to switch my tab. Do I stop sh sharing? I'm going to share my whole screen. Um, go over here. Um, so the Fibonacci sequence, you guys probably recognize this. You might see this like uh, uh, if you went to um, undergrad at, at like a liberal arts college, you might have seen this tattooed on a lot of guys with like hair similar to mine's uh, chest, arms, legs. Uh, uh, even uh, like under their eye these days. Um, but this is a Fibonacci sequence. Basically, it breaks down a, a series of ratios that occur a lot in nature. And the sort of the poster child for that um, is this Nautilus shell. You guys should recognize this as you see a lot of fossils that look like this. Well, at any rate, this Nautilus shell has those ratios all the way around creating the spiral. Right. Um, and those ratios occur like you can find it. So let's say Fibonacci sequence in uh, in nature. If I do Fibonacci sequence in nature, you see it showing up in a lot of things that just are naturally produced. The universe tends to have some form of meter based on the periodic table of elements and how energy works in the universe. All right. I know I'm losing some of you. I know. But bear with me. This is something that is recognized throughout biology. Um, that the Fibonacci sequence, even in the human body, um, uh, tends to have these ratios playing out. There's just something about them that makes them work well in the natural world. Well, the crazy thing is that some wise guy decided to apply that to the financial markets and found that when all, like on a, st on a, a statistical level, when we get all of these buyers and sellers together and all of the things that are coming into their decision making are plotted on with price over time, we start to see the, the ratio kind of play out. That's the Fibonacci thing. All right. That's, did I do a good job of explaining? Did I do a good job? You're muted, Spencer. Sorry, the old mute trick. You did. 
Uh, thank you, Neil. And I'm told we are now ready to go to bring on the the Benzinger Pro Happy Hour. So All right. I'm... So so I so okay. We we just pushed the disgruntled Canadian over the edge because I was just about to do Fibonacci retracements on LAZR, but maybe that's why you got to hit subscribe so you can be reminded to tune in tomorrow. on Monday. Tomorrow. On Monday. Monday. Tomorrow Saturday. You. Oh, all, right, all right. All right. All right. All right. So it'd be, be so you can tune in on Monday. We'll cover Fibonacci retracements right. if I remember. Um. Uh, and then uh, uh, there's something else that I wanted to say, but I forgot what it was. So peace, love. This is Get Technical with Neil and my lovely co-host, Lana Israel, Spencer Israel, a.k.a. Um, please join us on Monday, 930 to 1030 a.m. Eastern time. Without further ado, happy hour with Benzinga Pro. Let's go.